I'd say family. It's just a great place. I mean, it's a wonderful place to raise your kids. Uh, everybody's so kind and thoughtful. I've been here for a while now, and, and uh, it's a very special place that has so much to offer. You know, so uh, it's home to me, and this is my family here, extended family, that's for sure. Hi, yeah, I love downtown Elizabeth, and it's my hometown. I love the vintage of all the old buildings and the overhangs, and we walk down here all the time. I love the built-in shade that the overhangs provide, and of course, I love Riverside Tap House. What is your favorite thing to do downtown? Wander around and meet people, I guess. And I like to sit in some of the outside places and eat. Love it. And I love the river. <laughs> love that Doe River. Just to be able to, like sis, come out and meet and talk with other people and stroll around and don't have to drive to the big city to do it. I love to come downtown and go to the coffee company and then walk my dog on Sunday mornings. It's really relaxing. We live in town, so we like coming down here to the tap house usually on a Friday night and just having a few beers and catching up with friends. Um, I like to do pottery down at Made on Elk. They always are also playing really nice music. I like to get my hair cut at Seth's Barbershop or Wilson's Barbershop. The Barber Seth is my personal favorite. It's always a great atmosphere and uh, they do great haircuts for a good price. We love that it's a safe environment. We love to walk around. We like to shop locally and just support our, our city. I love all the activity that's going on now in downtown in all different places and all times of the season. I like sweet treats. Old soul, new stories. Old soul, new stories. Old soul, new stories. My name's Kelsey Frazier. I'm 30 years old and I grew up here in downtown Elizabethton um, and I currently work in the healthcare industry. My parents bought this house when I was a child so I spent over 20 years here and I still come back and see my parents often. So growing up I had a lot of connections here and I was really close with some neighbors and one of the neighbors that I was close to um, was her name was Miss Shepherd and I would go down and visit her as a child and um, spend some time with her and, and, and just talk to her. She was a big Chicago Cubs fan so I would watch the ball game with her and um, after she passed the city wanted to tear down her house and make it into a parking lot to give them more space. So I was 11 years old and I started a protest to help save her house and her house is still standing today. I wanted to protest to save um, that historic home because um, I, I find all the homes here in downtown Elizabeth and beautiful. Um, everything in our downtown is beautiful and there's so much history here. To save the historic home, I started a protest um, I wrote letters to the editor. I was featured on WJHL News, um, and I was interviewed to get awareness out that the city was trying to tear down this home. Um, there's an interview out there somewhere of me saying, I am chaining myself to this house to make sure it doesn't get demolished. And I started a written protest and went around door to door to get signatures to save that house. So I'm gonna share a little bit um, from the letter to the editor I, I wrote when I was 11 to the Elizabethan Star. Editor, I live in the historic area of Elizabethan, Tennessee. It would be very good if the city of Elizabethan would think before they demolish the house at 608 Hattie Avenue, as I understand it has been proposed. There is a lot of history in that house. To tear down that house for a parking lot, that is ridiculous. They have plenty enough parking space. So let me ask you this, city. Why would you tear down a historic house for a parking lot? Yes, it might need a little bit of work. Yes, it might not be the prettiest house in Elizabethan, but I know the person who lived there and she would not have liked for that house to be demolished. There's enough parking around town. I might just be 11 years old, but I'm gonna to stick with that house no matter what. So city of Elizabethan, I would like to know why you would want to tear down that house. If anyone would like to join me, please contact me and help me to fight to preserve our historic area. In the end, the, um, the protest was successful. 
Um, the, there is a family that has renovated the house and lives in the house today. I have a very special relationship with downtown Elizabethan. Um, I grew up here, three houses down from the covered bridge and spent over 20 years here. So that has a lot of memories here for me with my friends and my family. Um, I remember being a little girl and walking through downtown with my mom and dad, visiting some shops. I remember in middle school um, going to see a movie at the Bonnie Kate when you could see a movie and I saw Harry Potter for the first time at the Bonnie Kate. I was um, a member of Watts Dance Studio and for several years I participated in the Christmas Parade and the Fourth of July Parade and danced through downtown Elizabethan. And through today, um, I have so many special connections and memories throughout downtown Elizabethan. I was a board member for Main Street and I'm currently a member of Main Street and I have been able to see downtown grow and thrive through the years. And I also met my husband for the first time in downtown Elizabethan. So growing up in downtown Elizabethan, um, it holds a lot of special memories for me. Um, I love that through the years, the one thing I felt like has always been constant is um, we have been able to preserve the history of downtown and, and keep that the same, but it has also evolved. Downtown Elizabethan has also evolved throughout the years. Um, it's been great to see more businesses come and thrive in downtown Elizabethan. Through Main Street, I've been able to see growth um, and awareness of downtown and the beauty that downtown has to offer to not only the locals that live here in Carter County and surrounding areas, but even people coming into vacation to Boone or Roan Mountain um, and how we've really been able to spread awareness of downtown Elizabethan and grow that throughout the years. Um, it holds a special spot for me. I started Riverside Readers Book Club in downtown Elizabethan at Riverside Tap House. Um, and I've always been a big advocate of, of keeping um, and supporting local and supporting downtown Elizabethan. The history is, is top notch and the beauty is unmatchable. Some new stories that I want to see and continue to make downtown is I do want to see our, our book club continue to grow downtown. We meet once a month at Riverside Tap House. Um, I, I recently got married and I want to be able to give my family and my future family um, share the beauty of downtown Elizabethan with them. I have two amazing stepchildren and we are able to share downtown Elizabethan with them. We brought them to First Friday and celebrated First Friday with them and, and were able to partake in that. So through the years I want to continue to see that grow. Our downtown is what it is because of the people that came before us and helped pave it into what it is today. So I want to be a part and help continue that through years to come and pass that on to, to my children one day. I'm Joe Alexander. I have essentially lived in Elizabeth in all my life, which is a long time. Uh, and I had my business here in downtown for 45 years, worked here in downtown for 45 years, and uh, just have really enjoyed being in downtown. One of my favorite memories of downtown Elizabeth is when I was a small child and walking from our home over on North Main Street, which is a short distance from here with my mom, and uh, I was just a, like four or five years old and we would walk hand in hand across the Broad Street Bridge and up Riverside Drive and then come through town. My father's insurance office was here at that time. It was across the street from where I am now in the what's known as the Dungan Arcade building, which is Linkfelt Drug Center on the second floor. Then we'd go up and visit my grandfather, Joe Bowers, for whom I'm named, uh, that he was a dentist here in Elizabethan and he had a, an office uh, on the second floor of the Ritz building, which is the Ritz Mini Mall building now and so forth. So, so you know, I go back a long way with downtown. And touring downtown with my mom, we would go hit all the hot spots 
like Woolworths and Eagle Store and Cresses and you know all those sights and sounds and and wonderful smells that you run into buildings like that. So uh, uh, and then after after uh, that time, you know, again, like I've mentioned before, I grew up in downtown Elizabethan. Um, uh, later, when I went to high school, I met my high school sweetheart. And our first official date was at the Bonnie Kate Theater here in downtown. And uh, we also would go on dates at different places. And a lot of times we would end up at the Dairy Queen, which is now Jay's Corner. And uh, we, I remember getting a uh, lemon lime slush drink uh, and also maybe stealing a kiss or two from my wife Debbie in the parking lot. Uh, then uh, I spent four years away from here in Knoxville going to school. Uh, then I came back into the insurance business with my father, and as I mentioned before, I've worked here, worked here 45 years in the insurance business and, and loved all my time in downtown. And uh, I still look forward to coming downtown, even after I've retired a little over a year ago. Um, I normally get out and walk every other day, and my, my route takes me through downtown Elizabethan, so I get to enjoy and check on things. I've remained involved in downtown with Main Street. Uh, and the Holiday Lighting Fund and the, uh, the Rotary Club and several other things. I attend church at the First United Methodist Church, which is downtown over on East Street. So, uh, you know, I th downtown's been a very big part of my life. You know, thinking back to the 1950s when I first started growing up and coming to downtown and so forth, uh, like most small towns, the, the Central Business District was uh, the hub of the town. Uh, and, you know, it was packed on Saturday night and Friday night and just about every night of the week with people shopping and, and things of that nature. And, I, and during the day, it was a big shopping center. But, uh, and I've, I lived through the times of urban renewal when you saw the downtowns decline. And, and ours, we were very fortunate. It didn't decline as much as we thought it would and hoped it wouldn't, but uh, uh, it, it remained fairly vibrant. And uh, I've seen it go through different uh, metamorphoses during the years. Uh, uh, but uh, our downtown has continued to be a very solid place for placing businesses and uh, of course we can always do better. I always look at that. that uh, uh, there are many things we can improve on and Main Street has been instrumental in helping us guide, guide us in the right direction. As far back as I can remember, we have had Christmas lights in our downtown uh, for, for, on the poles and streaming across the street and things of that nature. 1998, uh, one of the city councilmen, uh, Harvey, and I, my, his last name escapes me right now, and he'll come back and haunt me because he's since deceased. But anyway, he, he uh, got involved in trying to redo the lighting in downtown because it was in pretty bad shape. And uh, so he started to, the, got the city involved to help provide some money, got the county involved, got the downtown businesses involved, and different, different, even outside the downtown, and we ended up buying new lighting for the downtown, and that's been going on since 1998, and um, I've been involved in that, uh, trying to, I bum everybody every year to get some money so we can, you know, put bulbs in them and have them maintained, not just because of the lights on the poles and things of that nature. We have some very unique things. We have the Fraser Fur, which is lighted, and that's handled by Carter County Bank, and we appreciate those folks uh, providing the lights for that. And my most special memory is of the tree on Lynn Mountain, the Merry Christmas sign. That one goes back to, I believe, 1957. That was started by the police department. A good man that I know uh, has since passed on, um, Henry Elliott, uh, he, was a, he was a policeman and he got several of the folks with the police department that started the, the, the tree and the Merry Christmas sign on, on Lynn Mountain. Later on, his son, uh, Danny Ray Elliott, worked for the Elizabeth Electric System and Danny Ray was key in continuing the, the tree on Lynn Mountain. So, and the electric system uh, continues to take care of that tree on Lynn Mountain. So that's a very special thing to me to see that tree lighted up every year. It's not Christmas time until the tree is on on Lynn Mountain. I hope that uh, I can have some positive influence on downtown and, and uh, things will continue to grow. I think we're very fortunate here. Uh, you have people come from outside of this area and just love our downtown. Um, and uh, I think we've been able to retain a lot of that small town atmosphere and hope that that will continue into the future. So my name is Miles Cook. Uh, I live downtown with my wife Courtney and son Morgan. 
My life has revolved around downtown Elizabeth. I worked at the Sheriff's Office for years, served in the United States Marine Corps here in the area, taught at TCAT up on Arney Hill, and now I'm the training coordinator at the Regional Law Enforcement Training Academy. My favorite connection would be hard to pick. My life, like I said, has revolved around downtown Elizabethan. Uh, my entire career for nearly a decade was right across the Cover Bridge. Now I live within 100 yards of the Cover Bridge. I've met most of my dearest friends in downtown Elizabethan uh, and spent many birthdays and get-togethers and family holidays all uh, right around downtown in the Doe River. Uh, perhaps some of my favorite memories would be from downtown at the Tap House over to working at the Sheriff's Office across from the Doe and trout fishing with my little boy there by the Cover Bridge. A little bit about my background and my story. I grew up in North Carolina. Uh, I moved with my parents to Maryville and then I come to Johnson City to go to ETSU and I stayed there for undergrad and graduate school. And the first place I was offered employment was the Carter County Sheriff's Office and started there in February 2012. And ever since then, I have felt like the adopted son of Elizabeth and Ann Carter County. My military service was, was come later. Um, I was 29 or 28 when I enlisted, uh, almost aged out. And the reason I joined the Marine Corps was the, the folks around me. So some of those or, or all of those were natives of Elizabeth and worked at the Sheriff's Office. Now I'm lucky enough to live across from Andy Wetzel and his three boys. I served with his three boys in the Marine Corps. And of course he owns the, the drive in and, uh, and lives right across from me here downtown. And it was, it was an honor to, to serve in the Marine Corps Reserve out of Johnson City. And very similar to downtown Elizabeth and, maintain those very close local ties. The relationship with downtown and staying connected is an easy one. So we, my family, we literally moved to the downtown area because of all the friends we made. Uh, every relationship I have with local city government, Main Street, all of our friends, every, everything seems to revolve around downtown, e even to the point of getting involved more and more and more and seeing our downtown grow and expand and elevate really gets me excited and and it seems every day we're, we're trying to, to help do something new down here. The feeling of, of being close with everyone and, and living downtown and working with everyone that's so involved in, in creating a better downtown, it makes me feel happy. It, it makes me feel close-knit, it makes me feel connected and uh, and happy about those those relationships we built. Looking forward, uh, in, in in my story, um, I I want to continue living downtown. I want to continue raising my son and maybe some more children downtown, uh, riding around on, on bicycles down here. And I, I really want to even double down on the involvement and the service here uh, in in local government and with local organizations, and and really try to bring everything I can to the table for Elizabeth. You know, another th thing I'm looking forward to, my, my folks are moving down here to spend more time with their kids and moving to Elizabeth. And I'm extremely excited about that and, and bringing them into what I would call the fold uh, of downtown Elizabeth and uh, being involved in the community. As a veteran of this area in downtown Elizabeth, and what I find amazing is, is some of the uh, respect paid in some of the the things we have downtown for our veterans like we're standing in the veterans walk we have the veterans of all wars memorial and the war memorial the roundabout downtown but even our downtown businesses and others take a, a unique note of our veterans i know when i was on shift at the sheriff's office uh, we had a special place downtown we'd eat breakfast every morning and all of us were veterans and they had a wall that they hung our pictures on, eating breakfast in our law enforcement uniforms, and then in each of our veteran pictures hung on the wall downtown. And that really resonates and is, is very special to me. That's Dada. That's Dada. I'm Vera Meredith Peters. My family, the Meredith family, owned and operated Carter County Ford here on East E Street, which is a very familiar address to me. 
from 1959 until 2005. My dad was a salesman here, Lloyd Meredith, and then he bought the business, uh, part, half of it, with Roger Piercy. So this street and downtown is very, very special to me for many reasons. Um, I, in 1958, when I was born, this became my second home. We played here, we laughed here, we worked here, we ate popsicles from right down the street here, which is now City Market. It was Miller's City Market. So many memory, memories in this area. Uh, down the street was the Coca-Cola Company. Uh, I can hear the bottles right now clinging together as they bring in the big trucks. But my mind has visions and just very vivid of the people who worked here. They were our Ford family. I can hear my mother saying right now, this is our family. And we talked about them and loved them around our dinner table um, on Broad Street. I have a passion for this downtown, a very rich, deep passion because my parents did. My mind is so flowing right now with so many things that we did. We just had so much freedom to just go um, yeah, because we lived in the downtown area with our grandparents who kept us, our parents worked here, and this downtown was the highlight of our lives. As we grew up, we, um, you know, we shopped here, we bought Christmas presents here, we held hands and walked the streets at Christmas and went places, but we always came home to the Ford Place and the Ford Place family. One of my biggest memories of downtown was the Ford showing every year. It was around November, and in front of the building, there would be big carrier trucks that would drive up and they would have all these new cars on them. And then they would sneak the cars up to Broad Street where we live, 1952, 1960s. I remember the 60s and, and 70s the most because our whole backyard on Broad Street, where all us kids played, would be full of new Fords. You hit them, nobody got to see them. It was a big, big thing downtown. And, um, and, and everybody, hundreds of people would come to the building when the new car show happened. And we had a Coca-Cola machine where everybody could get Cokes free. And, and uh, we had donuts on that day and from the bakery, from Variety Bakery, you know, local places. Everything was just popping and booming. This was our home. We had ice cream at Bergie Drug Store. We would, um, after church on Sundays, we'd go there and have chocolate nut Sundays. And just, I mean, so many things. I, I think about, change and how change is constant in our downtown and I love that change. I love the change. When I think about it, I miss of so many things because of the change. Yet I know that when I hear little sounds like on the front door of the four place opening that door, there's a little jiggle that takes me right back in a flash of a second to the memories that we had as children in all these places. And I'm sure that people who still live here and have spent their life in downtown Elizabeth, and they, they yearn for those memories. You know, everybody says, I wish it was like the, it used to be. We want those things, yet we know that change has happened. Like the Ford Place here, it's completely different. Uh, I haven't stayed away from it because when we sold it in 2005 after we had hot dogs and free Cokes again like it was a big show day with um, Leo and Martin and Mama and our families all gathered around Janet and our children, um, we felt like we were reliving the 50s and the 60s. So there's even with change, there's always a, a way to bring back that pop that we remember from the good old days. When Scott Sams bought the Ford Place from us, um, I thought, do I stay away? I, I don't think that I can go back in there because I love the good old days. And then I thought, no, change is part of our lives. And I was so glad that I opened the door and heard that little jiggle and came in and saw what Scott and Jason have done here. It's remarkable. My dad, Lloyd Meredith, had bought the old bus station Best Biscuits and Gravy. I can hear all the salesmen over here talking about what they're gonna get for, for lunch. And Mama's saying, well, let's go get green beans. And they would go over to the bus station. So it was a hub. It was a place of gathering. 
Yet we had to make a decision that was very hard for us as a family. We had to think about what are we doing? We're in downtown Elizabeth and we don't want to leave downtown Elizabeth and go to out and, and find a new place to build because we love downtown Elizabeth. And in 2019, when my mother passed away, I thought, Vera, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do for your family one more time? And I thought, that bus station lot. Um, and I talked to some people in town. This was before when food trucks were just barely popping out. I talked to some people in town, Jared Ellis being one of them, and he supported me and he said, you know, Vera, that's a great idea, food trucks. Why don't you try it? This was actually before mom passed away that I thought about the food trucks. But I thought that spot over there is a hub of downtown Elizabeth. And it's a place where people can meet and they can tell their stories, just what we're doing right now. So the Gathering Hub came to be and we made it be an opportunity for children, musicians, painters. The main part of it is um, I sought out people to come and sit and tell their stories. Uh, that's what happens in a downtown like this. Dreams come together, people throw out things, and you meet in the middle and you make them happen. So we just did some phenomenal things on the old bus station lot. Anyway, the bus station fulfilled its, um, its era and um, I talked to Mills Greenhouse with Johnny and Hannon and just said, how about flowers? We need flowers here. We gotta sell flowers. So Hannon came in the next spring and set up flowers and then it just opened up. The opportunity was there. Change had happened and um, Terry Steins and Hannon bought the the old bus station lot with all of its stories and um, they're adding a downtown pavilion. Downtown Elizabethan is an up and coming place where people's dreams are being met with lots of changes. Um, we are respecting the stories of people who love the good old days. It's amazing how sometimes I'll pull up at a red light and there'll be an old Ford truck in front of me and I'm like, whoa, maybe, maybe, maybe that's one from the Carter County Ford. And lo and behold, it is. And I think that's one of our people. And there's still a vehicle out there. You know, even with change, even with new cars and everything, there are still people who have the Carter County Ford license tag on the front of their vehicle. And yes, my heart skips a little bit and I think, whoa, Wow. So, you know, in all these stories that we're telling, there's always a chance for new opportunities. Everybody has an idea and everybody has a dream, yet we're not all fortunate enough to follow through with all those dreams. Yet in a small town like Elizabeth, then you can. The Ford Place was sold to Steve Grindstaff. The building was sold to Scott Sands and their dreams got to happen for them. However, we had new dreams. In your dreams, a lot of people make a very big impact on others, and that was Peggy Meredith, as well as my brothers. Martin had a passion for the farm. Dad bought a farm over in Watauga. We love that place, and um, so that's where our, our business is now, Meredith Valley Farm and Cabins. Things changed, um, we opened up a cabin business, but we've made a go of it. My sister-in-law Janet and I run it now. We talk to our children regularly about what to do and how to make things better. But um, our dreams have all evolved into where they're supposed to be at this moment in life. And it all functions around downtown Elizabeth. And it's still, such a blessing to hear the stories from Richie's and think about how we used to go in there and shop and buy our Christmas presents or um, Lisbeth and Hardware, Barnes Boring, just on and on. Uh, fortunately, you're going to get to interview Miss Virginia Laws, who goes back with more memories than even I do. I never dreamed I'd be sitting here at 65 talking about the dreams of downtown Elizabeth, and, but hey, it happens in each decade. Every person has their stories of downtown Elizabeth. And I am um, 
very grateful for being raised in a small town America and I'm grateful that I could be here. I don't know that I'll always be here. Who knows? Change. You think you will be a part of you will always be somewhere. My name is Virginia T. Laws. Uh, we're lifelong residents of Elizabethan. And how old are you, Miss Virginia? Uh, I'm 103. Wonderful. We first lived on Broad Street, and Mother loved that home. And of course, uh, as I grew older, um, we developed this part of Elizabethan. I, as I uh, reached about uh, 20, I got a job at um, the plants. Bemberg and, Glen, uh, and Glenstoff were two German companies that came over here and actually uh, helped the economy a lot because um, if you had a, a job at the plants and you had your little subsistence farm where you could grow your own vegetables, uh, you, had a, you had a good living here. And uh, downtown, I remember mostly on the other side uh, where the Carter County Bank is. And um, we had the four theaters uh, in town. We had the uh, Bonnie Kate. Uh, we had the Grand, which was on Elk Avenue. And we had the Ritz, which was across uh, the river. And I'm trying to think of the fourth one. I, the Ritz, the Bonnie Kate. The Betsy? No, the Capitol. The Capitol. The Capitol, yes. So we had four theaters in town. A boy from Johnson City asked for a date. And um, so, oh, mother was, thought it was, well, I was just 12 years old. But he wanted to come over, and uh, so I said yes. Mother went out and bought a radio, so we had something to entertain us. And uh, we went to the theater, Shirley Temple was on, and uh, as we walked down the street, all the neighborhood kids, about 10, followed us saying, Virginia's got a date. <laughs> I remember we had Cressy's and we had Woolworth's. Um, I worked at Cressy's but do you remember these little peelers that we have now and take so for granted that we peel potatoes? That's when that came out. And they put me in the aisle of the store, peeling potatoes, <laughs> showing people how to use the potato, potato peeler. Because uh, I could talk even back then. I was a tailor before I married, and uh, we had a cousin here, uh, Dr. Alan Taylor, who was a pharmacist and owned a Taylor drugstore. Uh, which is, was next door to Carter County Bank. So we would go there every afternoon. They also had a soda fountain, so <laughs> we would stop and get an ice cream cone or whatever we wanted. You notice what ni a nice broad street we have. You did parallel parking, and that's where you met everyone on Saturday evening. You'd come sit in your car, and the boys would come, come up to the window and talk, and. You'd chat. It was kind of a center for everyone to meet, high school age, high school age. So I remember sitting in the car and talking with a lot of boys that later turned into dates. <laughs> I love our downtown. I think we are wonderful. I love this place. I love the coffee company. And uh, we meet uh, lots of friends here for lunch. Food's good. Uh, the people are loving, kind, polite. I love the furniture store across the street. I bought quite a few items from them. I'm just so proud of Elizabethan because we have remained vital and we have still attracted people here. And, and you see a lot of friends here. You, I eat at City Market almost every day. Uh, wonderful cook there, Jennifer Hughes. and. Um, uh, they are personal. On my birthday, when I went in, they had balloons tied to the chair and uh, treated me and my friends to a free lunch in honor of my birthday. So uh, they're 
they're like your family. They're not like uh, just a store. And that's true, I think, of all of our uh, merchants downtown. Donna Netherland, my first grade teacher, um, was very interested in, in local history and um, taught first grade. And um, she is uh, the one that helped organize a book club that we have here, the Elizabethan Book Club. I was, uh, I was teaching at Milligan at that time, so must have been about... Uh, 1960? Yeah, that's close. We used to meet in homes a lot. Now we meet in the library a lot. In downtown Elizabeth. In downtown Elizabeth, uh-huh. Uh, the friendships are one of the best things. People who love books and love reading and exchanging our thoughts. We don't have to give any reports. We don't have to give any um, reviews of books. We meet together, usually just for some refreshments, and we'll have an outside speaker. So we have, a, we have a wonderful book club here. I'm a lifelong resident of Elizabethan, and God really blessed me, uh, giving me a home here. I have lived in a lot of other places uh, during the war, in Norfolk, and Miami, and New York. Anywhere there was a military, a Navy, or Army base, we were, we were stationed there. So I've seen a lot of that part of the world. You could keep me talking day and night about Elizabeth, and I really love our town. I think we have a, a caring town, um, and it has a variety of anything you want or want to do. We have a lot of a little recreations here. I want to finish up by saying Elizabethan is a town of old souls, me, 103, <laughs> new faces and new stores. And I love it, and I just think we have a caring place where we all love each other and care for each other. So when I was little, um, growing up here, I, know I didn't have family around, so they all lived like out of state, hours away. And every time my family from Louisiana would come up, we would bring them all here and we would feed the ducks. And it was just like the one thing we would do every time they came up. So it became like a tradition, kind of. Uh, whenever we would come to the cover bridge, it was like my grandma and my aunt and cousins and my sister and my parents. And we would come and feed the ducks. <laughs> So I became reconnected with downtown Elizabethton probably whenever I had Shelby um, in 2014. Coming down here when I was a child with my family was just a cool moment and a piece of history so I like bringing her here and we also feed the ducks and the birds and then now my sister and her kids come here so she gets to come here with her cousins just like I came with my cousins and it's just a very bittersweet moment. My relationship with downtown has evolved to um, helping out with all the events that go on downtown. I graduated from college with a degree in marketing at ETSU. I help Main Street with their um, social media, so like their Instagram and Facebook and their posts and all their pictures. And I'm a huge advocate outside of that. I'll just take pictures anytime I'm down here, tag downtown, <laughs> try to get people down here. Other things I like to do in the community is I actually work for Riverside Tap House, so I also do their social media and help with all their events that also involve downtown. Downtown Elizabethan has been a part of my whole life, um, from growing up here to having my daughter here, and now she's growing up here. I really got involved with the community after hanging out here with her and got with Main Street Elizabethan. And then with my involvement in that aspect of our community, it led me to Riverside. And now I have a whole family in downtown Elizabethan. It's all one big community and I love just spending time here with everyone. I love being a part of this community. I'm looking forward to continuing to come down and feed the ducks with Shelby and then hopefully, you know, I don't wanna leave this area, so hopefully we stay here and she can grow up here, maybe eventually bring all her friends or her family here and also be involved in the community 
and I can't wait to see where we go from here. I'm excited to use my skills in marketing and my passion for the town and um, help revitalize and keep revitalizing this town so we can all enjoy it and tell the story of what this town used to be and what it's going to be in the future. My favorite thing to do here is probably feeding the ducks with my mom. <laughs> Not the candy? <laughs> oh, Bobby. Shelby. You're so cute. So cute. <laughs>
And when the Phantom was unmasked, he had to run out into the lobby to catch his breath because it petrified the heck out of him. So that's my Bonnie Kate memory. And uh, again, it's a, it's a beautiful establishment. I have new stories. Everyone in Elizabethan has new stories. One particular story I'm incredibly proud to be a part of is the Bonnie Cates. Multi-venues are the future of the Bonnie Kate. Music, theater, cinema, and I'm quite proud to be part of helping the Bonnie Cates story continue. Local history is kind of my thing. I guess I inherited it naturally from my dad, who used to be the uh, county historian decades ago. The post office, Barnes Boring Hardware, the building next to it used to be the Sanitary Cafe. If you slide down a little further, you have now Lingerfelt Drugstore, which once was Taylor Drugstore, and before that it was Central Drugstore. And recently I've been uh, editing on a lot of historical uh, 16 millimeter films and getting to see these images of Elizabeth from the 20s, 30s, 40s, and 50s is just absolutely stunning. So it's really interesting being here in the location of the very first movie theater in town, uh, the Grand. It's kind of a reflection of what used to be. And there's a lot of heart in the past here. But I've always felt that it's best to revere the past, but look to the future. And that's something that I really am engrossed and interested and love about the opportunity in Elizabethan. It has a history, it has a legacy, and my grandparents, my great-grandparents, they were masons. They built uh, a lot of the downtown. Uh, Frank Edens, uh, E.L. Edens, they didn't look to the past, they were building a future. And I think it's important that today, in the 21st century, that those in Elizabethan those in downtown Elizabethan are really focused on living now and enjoying what they're doing, but focus on the future. I love looking at all of my father, Jay Frank's um, historical pics. They're beautiful, but I really like thinking about what will be. The nice thing about coming home to Elizabethan is meeting all these wonderful, new merchants and they have vision and it's great to be a part of that because they inspire me and I hope I inspire them and it's all about joining forces being a community supporting one another just absolutely cheering everyone on downtown Elizabethan is an old soul but there are so many new stories waiting to occur And then go to all the antique stores because there's always good stuff in there. My favorite thing is going down on the weekends, seeing friends that I don't get to see during the week. I came from Knoxville today to bring my mom to the Covered Ridge Festival. We look forward to this every year and we are blessed to be here. <laughs>